Hello and welcome to the Iconicon panel about um, basically foreign variations of classic American toy lines from the 1980s. Um, I've got some fantastic guests on the channel again today. Um, I'll, I think I'll do this in reverse order because this is the first time I've had Sal on the on my channel during Iconicon. So, Sal from Two Cents Toys, please introduce yourself. Hello, I'm Sal from Two Cents Toys. And I'm very excited to be here. I don't have any uh, foreign variants on my table, but I tried to channel my inner Tony and think, okay, what's he going to pick for action force? Let me grab the American version of that. So yeah, that explains all this. <laughs> yeah, I've got quite a bit of action force on the table here. So, and we have uh, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy, the Tokyo Toy Bastard. How you doing? <clears throat> Some internet issues there, I think. Um, Bobby. <clears throat> Good morning or afternoon for you. Morning for me. <laughs> since you since you wore the analog toy shirt yesterday, <laughs> I put the action force on today for you. <laughs> Love, it. Love it. Looks good on you. Looks better on you than it does on me. <laughs> You're too kind, sir. Um, thank you for getting up early this morning. Wouldn't miss it, pal. Awesome. Awesome. Uh, and Ed, how are you doing today? Really good, really good. Uh, went out to a flea market. I found some knockoffs that I really liked, so I'm happy. I'm a happy camper, and I'm I'm glad to be on this panel because I want to learn about this stuff, like everybody watching. <laughs> awesome. Well, I, I I had a plan. Obviously, anyone who's ever followed my channel should already assume that I'm going to talk a lot about the Palatoy variations. They're a particularly action force. You know, I've got a, a table full of them here. Um, but I think maybe we might go back slightly. Um, so I really feel like some of the first variation, foreign variations of classic toy lines were the Palatoy variations in Kenner's Star Wars line. Um, so I've got here the Palatoy X-Wing, um, which people know... It didn't have any electronics in it um, because it didn't have any electronics. Obviously, there's no uh, there's no light button at the front. There's um, just a sticker on the back. There's no battery compartment. A chromed R2D2, and where the American version of this toy um, basically it's it started out white um, with the first release, but then with the Empire Strikes Back, it was then molded it kind of in grey plastic. Um, the Palatoy one stayed white all throughout its run. So this one here is kind of Empire Strikes Back era, so it is 1980. Um, this is the white X-Wing with the chrome R2-D2 and the battle damage stickers. Uh, are you familiar with this, Bobby, this toy? I am, yeah. Uh, wh when did you first become aware of it? You know, it, obviously it wouldn't have been in childhood through your No, no, I didn't, start, I didn't start seeing the, the Palator variant stuff till I was going to toy shows in my late 20s. So that's when, like, like I first learned of Action Force, I think I was probably, I think, 25 at the time because uh, I'd, I'd seen a red laser and I was like, what is that? Like some, I thought it was a knockoff, but a, a really, a really good knockoff. And yeah. uh, that's kind of like how I learned about it. And then I'm pretty sure I, I saw, like I would get like Star Wars Galaxy magazine and all of, like I would get every toy magazine that came out. I was like a big fan of magazines back then. And I'm pretty sure they they did, uh, uh, one of them did a big article on the Palatoy Star Wars stuff. So I got to see the, the you know, the different variants then. Yep. When you were about 25, so what, last year? <laughs> I, dude i wish i wish i'm getting old uh and what about you sal we're, 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 you're obviously familiar with this stuff but uh mm -hmm. you got a, you got a story related to to palatoy star wars toys I, I do actually it's an embarrassing one um so when i first started collecting vintage um I kind of just figured it out on the fly, I guess, for lack of a better word. Um, this is back in 2000, start, like 2008, I started dabbling in vintage, uh, vintage Star Wars. And then 2012 is when I really started to kind of like buy them up as I found them. I didn't understand the concept of foreign variants. Like I, 
no pun intended, it was foreign to me. I was like, oh, it's the same everywhere. And there was a convention I went to in my state where a guy had a uh, a Palatoy X-Wing. And not knowing anything, I was like, oh, this is a knockoff. This is a bootleg. Why is it so expensive? And told the guy that. And then years later, discovered Palatoy. And I was like, retroactively putting my foot in my mouth. <laughs> so, not, not the story. When I was on the panel the other night um, on the All Things 80s channel where we were talking about the old Argos catalogs, we were going through that catalog and we actually came across a picture of a um, of a grey X-Wings, which which weren't sold in the UK. And and um, and Toy Polloi actually pointed that out. He was like, in the UK, when you go to, you know, your flea markets or your toy shows, it's these white X-Wings with the, with the chrome R2-D2s that turn up. The American Kenner versions are... Uh, quite difficult to acquire um, in in the UK. You know, obviously there's there's eBay and things like that. So, mm-hmm. um, Ronnie James DOA, thank you very much for the very kind super chat. Good morning, Tony and panel. It's good afternoon here. It's getting so confusing. <laughs> I thought I had this whole schedule locked in, and as I've got further and further into the convention, I'm I'm forgetting where I'm supposed to be and when. So. <laughs> Um, do you collect vintage Star Wars at all, Ed? I, I do. I started like a year ago, and uh, yeah. it's been going swell. Yeah. <laughs> Everybody told me don't do it, but I started it. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, loads of like big collectors over here. They have like some of the Palatoy stuff, but also like the variants from France compared to the UK factory. Yeah. Um, so I'm constantly learning about that. Um, yeah, but uh, unfortunately, like, it's not something you'll find at a flea market over here. So it's pretty much me buying off of uh, collectors uh, and trying to get lucky at uh, garage sales. Um, but you hardly see any vintage Star Wars stuff over here, unfortunately. Yeah. Even though it's sold well. So, yeah, it's weird. Uh, Jody, thank you very much for the super chat. You said we had a thing in Europe the Transformers sometimes came in the wrong, like, diaclone colours, e.g. the red tracks. Um, okay, I'm, I, I'm, I'm not as up to speed with, with Transformers. Um, uh, so the diaclone, that would have been the colours that they would have been originally sold in, in Japan. Right. I'm yeah. sure. That, that would yeah. be a, an interesting thing to talk about is uh, even though Transformers is kind of an American IP, it originated in Japan, so would ours be technically foreign releases? Um, yeah, actually, <laughs> it started over yeah. there. So. They mixed two lines together and then they right. built a, a story uh, around it. Right. Um, so the Transformers IP, like story, is American, but I'm talking about the toys specifically. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So obviously, um, Diaclone and, and Microchange came over mm-hmm. from Takara. Yeah. Um, Bob, Bobby, you don't collect vintage Star Wars, do you? I don't. Um, I. I collected vintage Star Wars at several points in my life. I I collected just before the 95 Power of the Force stuff came out and then kind of was off and on after that and then sold my collection when I was in my 20s. But then I think like five, maybe five years ago or four years ago, it wasn't that long ago. I tried getting back into vintage Star Wars. I mean, you're probably like, why would you bother getting back in with the high prices? But the thing that kind of turned me off. Now, I don't want to. I'm not. I'm not for or against repro. I see pros and cons eat both ways. But I'm a loose collector, and I, I like the idea of something being, uh, you know, complete. And having original stuff, and I know, I know, Michael makes very good points about you know everything is a reproduction of, of of something. But when I was collecting vintage Star Wars, I wanted everything to be original, and I felt like I didn't have the knowledge to get around what stuff was repro and what wasn't. It could, because they got so good with the repro parts that I was like, I don't even know what I'm what I'm getting. And I had one guy tried to tell me that. The, the Yoda that I bought from him was his childhood Yoda, yet his cane, the paint scratched off of it. And I'm like, dude, it was a molded color. Like, 
oh no, no, that was that was my childhood one. I'm like, all right, I'm out of this game. So I ended up just selling. I ended up collecting three quarters of the line, and then sold it and made a pretty good profit off of it, which was good. But uh, that you know that was kind of kind of the end. I would love to go back and get you know a vintage Star Wars collection just because it was such a big part of my childhood. But um, as of right now, I try to keep things a little more streamlined uh, between Joe and now superpowers. Yep. Bought yourself something this morning, didn't you, Bobby? <laughs> Uh, what? Well, oh, you mean in the oh, for you, yeah, for you, morning, yes, in the auction yesterday. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah, the morning, yeah. For me, it's confusing. Well, like, so, confusing. so it's funny because my my superpowers, I, I don't collect the vehicles, I only collect the figures. And Tony sends me a message and says, uh, do I have a, a, a Lex, what is it, Solar 7? Yeah. And I was like, no, nah, I don't do the vehicles. And then I, I pull up Facebook and I'm like, oh, the auction's going on, and it happened to be a Lex thing, and I'm like, it's for a good cause. Let me just buy it. You know, so I ended up like buying this this Lex vehicle that is a terrible vehicle and probably something I didn't want, but you know, because it was for charity, I, I went in there and got it. Yeah. Yeah. So you so you outbid me, but um I was only buying it to give it to you anyway. <laughs> that's funny because that's funny because Dante said the same thing and I was like, oh shit. Yeah. Why didn't you guys like let me know? I would have backed out. But like I said, it, it was for a good cause, and I'm glad that the the charity's getting you know the money. Yeah, 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 yeah. Likewise, I I won, um, I won the like the carded figure lot, um, okay. uh, which bits and pieces of it for me, and bits and pieces of that lot were, were for some other people. Um, but yeah, then I, I won the um, the vintage Star Wars Imperial Attack base. Um, and I have gifted that to uh, one of the moderators who's helping out with Iconicon. So awesome! I was hoping some of this stuff would show up. I was waiting. I was waiting. Oh. Um, but uh, I, I don't like to have my my phone out at dinner, and I was at my in laws having dinner, and I'm like kind of sitting there under the table, like watching the auctions like going on. <laughs> What's next? What's next? Yeah, that's um, that Starcom uh, auction got pretty intense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I was, I was, I was in there. I was, I was like, oh, I was itching, but it went high. So yeah, that's a great line, though. I've, I've never come across that before. Never come across that. I, I had it as a kid. I used to always stick them to my, my mom's refrigerator. So um, I remember that line. But uh, I was actually on eBay last night looking at, at some just because of you know got brought up in the auction. I'm like, oh, yeah. is this gonna be the next line that I get into? <laughs> So, <clears throat> continuing on with um, um, not only Star Wars, but particularly Palatoy Star Wars, a toy that I've been on the hunt for for quite some time now, because I remember having this as a child, and obviously I grew up in the UK, so I definitely had the Palatoy version, and that's the Land Speeder. I've got a Kenner Land Speeder in the collection. Uh, the Palatoy Land Speeder did not have um, an opening. I'm going to call it a bonnet. You might call it a hood. Um, but that front part of the vehicle that lifts up to show the engine bay, <laughs> you, you lift up the bonnet, the bonnet and the boot. Mm -hmm. It's not the hood and the trunk, mate. It's the bonnet and the boot. <laughs> Is that funny to you? <laughs> <Wow>. <laughs> That's um, what my grandma calls it. Yeah, nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, look, I, I, I do I do come across um, Palatoy X-Wings on eBay. Um I've come across quite a few. There's actually, I bought this one recently here in Australia and the guy had like two or three for sale. Um, but the, um, the Palatoy land speeders do not come along very often. And that's one of the first toys I ever remember playing with in childhood. Um, that and Fisher price adventure people. I remember having the land speeder and pushing it around on the, on the, on, on the front path leading up to the front door of the house when I was very, very young. So um, um, do we want to get into Action Force since we've got the Action Force guy on the channel? <laughs> <laughs> oh, what's, what's that you've got there, Ed? That is, um, I, I think it's UK Spirit. Yeah, oh my sure. god, that, yeah. that is a grail for me, sir. That's a great figure, it is, it is, and yeah, not, not very common. Um, is it was that from? It's kind of like the Marauders, but it's a UK exclusive one, eh? Uh, yeah, they, yeah, they, they. So him and Mutt had this kind of quasi-looking Marauders uh, paint scheme. 
but they were cool because they were dark gray with the red on it. They weren't that they didn't have like much like some of the powder blue, but not not overpowering. And that's why I love those figures. Yeah, it's it's almost yeah. night force colors. Yeah, and then at the same time they had some some yeah. tiger force figures, which were great. I also have a couple of the Euro exclusive Tiger Force ones, but not yeah. within reach. Um, but uh, indeed, before that, it, it was like Action Force that came out first, right? Like they they seem to have rebranded it to yeah. that. And, yeah. Uh, so loads of variations. <laughs> the second year of Action Force. So the, so the first year of Action Force, 1982, um, Palatoy just shrunk down their popular 12 inch Action Man. I've got. And a number of them here. I mean, I mean, technically, these are foreign variations of the original 60 Joes, but, you know, oh, yeah. this is a 1980s convention. We're talking about 1980s toys. <laughs> yes, the SAS attack. Or the, well, the attack actually, actually, actually here, here's, the, here's the 82 line. There's 82 line. Right? Nice. That's 82 line? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so, yeah, so the original 1982 line, they were basically just to compete with Star Wars – Palatoy shrunk Action Man down to the Star Wars scale. Um, and I've had a number of comments on my videos in the past that Action Force is a G.I. Joe ripoff. Oh, the thing was, there both they. of these toy lines um, debuted at Toy Fair in very early 1982. So I think Palatoy debuted the Action Force line in January at the London Toy Fair. And then like two weeks later, the February Toy Fair in New York, Hasbro launched G.I. Joe, a real American hero. Back in those days, the, the companies had no idea what each other were doing, what they were planning. Um, but because they had that connection in the past with the 12 inch Action Man and G.I. Joe, where it was sold under license, once they saw what they were, they, they were bringing out, uh, what Hasbro was bringing out in 1982, they took a whole heap of the 1982 figures and molds brought them into the 1983 line where we went into the teams um, with some really, really interesting color changes on figures, on vehicles. Um, mm -hmm. I think I, I can remember speaking to you, Bobby, talking about the first time, was it Red Laser? Mm -hmm. Was the first one you came across? Yep. Uh, which is obviously, obviously this guy here who is um, um, an interest, a very interesting recolor of Cobra Commander. Go ahead, Sal. I was just hoarding it up as an example so people knew which cover commander. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Michael Schaefer is an action force making a comeback. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. I might know. I might know someone who's bringing out a new uh, a new action force toy line. <laughs> How's it all going, Bobby? It's going great, man. Shipping soon. Very excited. Very nice. excited. It's yeah, cool to not, like be into series two now and get you know seeing test shots for series two, you know now it's like it's all like kind of coming together and now the lines like it's more than just series one now and it's 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 evolving which is really really awesome so um, I'm happy with with the way things are turning out and I just can't wait to get it all in everyone's hands. Yep. Yeah, I hope, I, I'm, I'm actually, I know I've ribbed you in the past about it being delayed. I am actually don't want it that soon. I need a break after Iconicon before I start making a whole heap of videos when I get mine. <laughs> uh, a week or two breaks, fine. <laughs> um, so when you first came across Red Laser, did, did you, as an American collector, what were your first thoughts? Did you find it desirable? Did you, did you want this figure or? Well, like I said, I thought it was a knockoff. And but what like looking at it, I was like, that's actually a really good knockoff because you guys know you see a bootleg, it's it's very they're usually poorly done. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, like uh, Estrella, you look at like an Estrella Joe or or uh, sorry, a fun school Joe, they look like garbage. But the Estrella Joes, which I don't want to call those those knockoffs, they were just you know done in, in another country, those were done really well. But like knock knockoffs tend to not have great paint and that sort of thing. So when I saw it, I thought it was just the bootleg. And when I asked the guy about it, he like explained it to me, and my mind was blown. I was like, "Wait, this is real? Like this is something that's like for real, for real?" And you know, uh, he explained like why it's it's Red Laser, not Cobra Commander. And then I went down a rabbit hole after that because I think he had a couple extras, like other other versions of of the of the Joe 
uh, action force figures there. I don't remember what, what it was just read. I just remember red laser cause it was so like impactful to me. Yeah. So when I started like, or when I was started collecting international stuff, like early thirties, like I went after the UK stuff first because, you know, I learned of the Tiger Force stuff and the, you know, the, the spirit and, and the mutt and they were expensive then they're super expensive now. So I'm glad I got on them then, but, you know, learning of, of all like the, the cool action for now, I don't want to call them variants, but when <clears throat> after Hasbro acquired Palatoy and they started doing Joe's as action force characters, like I got into those first. And then learned of the the five POA stuff later on, which yeah. I'm now you know trying to to fill the gaps in my collection of that. But uh, the the Joe stuff looked great, like the the Steeler. I forgot. Do they call Steeler Steeler in in the Palatoy line? Yeah, he's Steeler. one of the, he's one of the few characters who didn't have his name changed. So yeah. I didn't. Um, <clears throat> I only had so much room on the table, but mm. um, obviously I've got the SAS Panther who came with what looks like version one snake eyes, but he's got a few gray paint apps. Yeah. He's weirdly called stalker. Yep. Um, but yeah, every, everyone else pretty much had their name changed. Yeah. So, yeah. Yes. yeah. So stalker became jammer snake eyes became stalker, but Steeler kept his, his original name. Um, yeah. But like, actually, figures, like figures like him, they're super, super cool. There's something about that, that green and that red and the black. That just goes together really well. Um, so yeah. I, I love all all the Joe versions of the Action Force characters. Yeah, I've, I've, certainly um, Z Force I think is the most visually arresting. Yeah, you know that, that particular camouflage pattern with the the red highlights. Didn't someone gift you something at Joe Fest? They did. They did. I uh, so I was at a gentleman's booth and. Uh, his name is David Bond. He has uh, an online store. Uh, it escapes me right now, but I'll, I'll look it up and I'll get it out there. I was at his booth and he had this there. And, you know, I was asking him, you know, what he wanted for it. And uh, I wasn't sure if I was going to get it. It's missing, you know, it's missing the, the, the turret gun. But it's in great shape. You know, all the all the labels are nice. It's got the battery door. And uh, I said, all right, I'll, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll think about it. I'll come back. And I had to go back to my booth and you know, uh, do some stuff. And then a few minutes later he came back and he said, you know what, that I, I want you, like, you should have this. And he said some, something along those lines, like, like this, this belongs with the guy doing action force now. And I was so taken back by it. And it was such like a, a, a kind gesture. And, and I was like, wow, like this, this is, I couldn't, you know, thank him enough for it. So, uh, I, I brought it right to the office because I'm going to have in the conference room back there, we're going to call it the war room. I want to have one side is going to be mo modern action force with my stuff. And then I want the other wall to be all my vintage action force stuff. So it's like now and then, and, uh, that, that, the, the, that's going to have a very special spot on the wall because, you know, it's got, it's got some meaning now that, that, you know, there was a story behind it and it was such a, a nice thing that he did for me. So thank you, David. And if um, any of my action force fans in the chat, have one of those small guns for the, the Z4 <laughs> battle tank available. Let me know because I'm going to buy it and, and send it to Bobby. Um, oh, thank you. I'll, I'll buy it. <laughs> and it's myself. I don't want you to have to spend money on it, but I appreciate that. So uh, apart from like color variants that they did to the original G.I. Joe vehicles, did um, Palatoy like cut corners like they did with Star Wars um, in, in like uh, – minimizing the detailing or anything it's no no, no, no. They, they also like made up. their own stuff right like the robo yeah was, yeah was their own design yeah they, they, they made a lot of their own stuff but once they basically reconnected with with hasbro in um in 82 the 83 line i think pretty much all of the vehicles um as a matter of, in actually when you say cutting corners in some cases they did the complete mm. opposite yeah. and actually improved the toy Okay. The ATC, yeah. yep. um, the Z Force ATC here, is a fantastic example. They gave it a tow hook, which the original APC didn't. Uh, actually, Sal, let yeah, talk, talk, say, me through, talk me uh, through the GI Joe APC. Yeah. I was going to say, if uh, <laughs> if you wanted to, we could open them both up and show yep. people what we're talking about. Let me move all these guys out of the way and try not to make too much noise because my microphone is very close to them. So here on the APC, you know, we've got the 
cannon here on top, and instead of a tow hook, we have a bumper that pulls down because this is a troop carrier you're supposed to be able to carry it. Right. So let me try to remove this without muting my mic and turning it way down or making too much noise. You know what? Let me go ahead and mute this real quick. Drum roll. <laughs> I'm very excited for this because the ABC okay. is, is probably my favorite vehicle. So I have every version, including the Action Force one. So okay. just just for those wondering, these tabs are very fragile, so you have to be kind of careful with those. But um, not a lot going on on the inside. We have two seat belts that are removable, and you can stand some absurd number of figures. They've got the pegs here so they can stand in the middle and then you know bucket seats for their butts. And then this whole thing comes off. So you've got the steering wheel and all that. Now, as much as I love the aesthetics and the ability to carry figures, the Action Force one is far superior, like drastically superior. You lose a lot of the inside surface area to store figures, but you make some substantial gains, in my opinion. And you, uh, Can you just show us the turret very quickly as well, please, Sal? Absolutely. Um, so we have the turret here on the top. Uh, lots of detail on it and that you know it just spins it doesn't raise and lower uh, a lot of the time these tabs are also broken because you can pop it off which i'm <sighs> sweating bullets but i'm going to remove it for you um the things i do for tony you're lucky i love you uh, <laughs> come on please don't play break, break live that would make me sad okay so a lot of the times you find canopies like this now uh, Bobby can confirm or deny this. There was a variation in the United States where this canopy was green. Yep. So that was, what was that, a mail away? That was the mail away one. Yeah. yeah. Which which I prefer. It looks really cool. Um, yeah. Seeing just that, that because the, the body of the APC is this. this right, this olive drab green. Olive drab, but then the, the canopy was a, a lighter OD green, which, which right. was a very cool contrast to it. Now, they, also, they also issued that. That mailway APC uh, during, I believe, a Joe Con, like very mm -hmm. early Joe Con, like a 1997 or something like that. Mm -hmm. So we can see this was copyrighted in 1983. We got all this stuff under the undercarriage. Now, what I would like to see is an APC done in desert colors to match the canopy. I think that would be pretty slick if I'm, you know, being completely transparent about things. So. And of course, we have the G.I. Joe stickers and the American flag and all that kind of stuff with the United States up here on the front. But, you know, it's a uh, pretty, pretty nondescript, but, you know, it's a troop carrier. It's kind of, uh, I, I would, as compared it to, to Battle Bones from Motu, a fair comparison, you think, because it's a toy, but it's meant to carry figures around or ha has a dual purpose. It's better than the Battle Bones, though. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah, but I'm yeah. saying, like, in concept. Yeah. So yeah, and they're, and they they're also hard plastic wheels. Yep, very hard plastic wheels. Um, I don't know yeah. if you can hear my thumbnail going across those, which I'm sure is making some people cringe. But hard plastic <laughs> wheels. So, but held together by screws, at least here on the bottom. So that's yeah. uh, not very commonly seen with GI Joe because a lot of it's just no, kind of no, tab no. A, tab B. So the difference is. With the palette, obviously, beyond just the color scheme, um, we'll start with. So this also has the um, uh, the carry handle, um, but it's got a tow hook. I don't know how well you can see that there. Yeah. That um, that's got a tow hook, so you can actually tow one of the artillery pieces um, into combat. This has got actual real rubber tires as opposed to hard plastic. Um, same kind of size. Um, but then you'll notice that the turret is very different. The turret has a, a very small antenna. Have you got antennas on, on yours, Bobby? No, I've been I've been itching to, to buy one of the repro ones because I don't mind it being a repro antenna. I just haven't gotten around to it. Plus, all the repro antennas all come from the UK, so I'm paying more for shipping of the antenna than the antenna actually costs. <laughs> I think I've got a spare one somewhere. Um, but yeah, this, this has actually got an opening hatch. So yeah, there's a very Ooh. small antenna in there, which always breaks off um finding originals is practically impossible um so unlike the gi joe version you can actually have a gunner in there uh this is a, a, a uk recolor of gung-ho no, known as gaucho which i always thought was a weird name and then of course 
the missile rack. You know, you've got four small missiles, which also pivot and turn. The brackets for that are very hard to get as well. Um, but the piece de resistance, as they say, if I can get this off without breaking it. The inside of this is completely different and has a medical bay with a removable stretcher, another hard piece. You get an extra accessory with this. Um, yeah, there's a medical base. So there's seating on one side, a medical bay. There's a storage container at the front for, um, you know, if you, for your spare action force weapons. I think Palatoy, well, actually, I've, I've spoken to Bob Breach and he had some, um, some level of involvement in, in the changes here. And they basically took all the tooling from Hasbro, brought it over, and they were kind of looking at this. I mean, I'm not sure exactly how many shows you can seat in the APC. It's like 26 or 28, something like that. Um, I think Palatoy kind of looked at this and went, not many kids are going to have that many Action Force figures. Like, it probably only needs to to seat maybe 10 um, and, and put some more play value in there. So that was their thought process behind it. Um, yeah. So that's a very long-winded way, Ed, of saying, no, they didn't cut corners. In some cases, they did the complete opposite. Yeah, but so, yeah, it's a very good example. Um, do you guys like that they uh, really dedicated colors to the factions and put that on all of the uh vehicles compared to like what J. joe did it was always like this looks better with this design um although i mean See, I, I, although cool. i never grew up with really early gi joe i can really appreciate and i'm talking you know 1982 gi joe because of you know all the guys were, were OD green. They looked like they were from the same unit, similar helmets and stuff like that. Uh, I, I, while I do enjoy all the different characters that came further along, um, yeah, the whole, the, the color scheme of the, I remember when I was a kid, you were, you were either a Z force cause you couldn't, you know, none of us kids in England could afford yeah. all the different types. So you were either a Z force kid or an SAS kid or, I don't know that many people who are Q Force kids, but <laughs> <laughs> um, so th th these have obviously become quite. I think I think when you come across any kind of a, a foreign variant that is of the same or in some cases superior quality, they are always desirable. Um, I find some, particularly some of these these figures. I mean. The pilot of this, this is a recolored um, tripwire from G.I. Joe. Um, I think this is, his name's Blade, is that right, Bobby? Blades, yep. Yeah. Yeah, yeah the helicopter's called Hawk and he's called Blade. Um, that's a very, very difficult figure to acquire with the complete logo still on the chest, not rubbed off. Same as um, Hunter, who is a recolored Cobra officer, who's now the driver of the Wolverine, which was originally cover girl in the States. So they've recolored the Wolverine. Um, and again, getting him with the SAS logo on the chest is, is very difficult. Are these, um, do people find these quite desirable if they see them at toy shows in the States and stuff, Bobby? Um, yeah. Yeah. Like when I was at, at Joe Fest a few weeks ago, um, there was actually not a lot of it. And if it if they do have it, it kind of goes quick or it has like an absurdly high price. Um, I know uh, there's a few sellers that that always kind of carry action force stuff. And I always kind of, you know, go to them first just to to get some stuff. But there wasn't much this year. Uh, I find it very, very difficult. Um, you know, I'm missing I think I'm missing a half of the because I've been collecting all the Carter figures. So, yeah. I have about, I think I have half the line and I have all the, you know, the Joe versions loose. Um, but uh, I, you know, I, I really want a, a robo skull and that's, you know, it's, it's hard. I check eBay a lot, but it, it's, it's hard finding uh, uh, sellers in the state selling action force stuff. And it's, it's, hard. it's also hard to find complete. So it's, you know, the hunt continues, but you know, I own, I would imagine it's, this is how it is for, you know, you guys in, you know, internationally trying to find, you know, 
Kenner Star Wars stuff or Hasbro GI Joe stuff. It's just making its way over there is, is tough or you have to pay the high international prices. Yeah, I just pay the high international prices. <laughs> <laughs> Most of the time, it's, it, to be honest, there's not much stuff I've actually bought from here in Australia this year. One one of the exceptions is this Palatoy X-Wing. When I found this in Australia, and this was the version that I wanted. Um, obviously, I, I sent one of these to Michael French last year, I think, um, because I came across one that was a really nice example, but it didn't have the battle damage stickers on it, which I know is his preferred version. Although I'm not a huge fan of the battle damage stickers, this is the one I remember playing with as a child, the white one with the battle damage stickers applied. So when I saw this in Australia, I was like, right, oh, that's the one for my collection. Um, but yeah, most of what I buy, a lot of what I buy comes from the Netherlands, Ed. <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> and my Robo Skull came from the Netherlands, actually. Yeah. So. Um, I, I might be able to hook you up with someone, Bobby. You might be selling one. Okay. okay. I'll let you know. <laughs> Thanks, bud. The, there is one thing that I, I find interesting. I, I believe Tony and I, you and I talked about it on the episode of Power Talk I appeared on, is how like, we could, we could say that there's international variations, but then there's times where, like uh, Destro, for example, with uh, your Red Jackal, it's a completely different character. Yes, like in canon and everything, and I'm I'm always interested because to, to some people, i.e., me, I'd be like, "Oh, that's a Destro variant," but it's an entire without knowing the Action Force mythology like yourself. He's a whole character in of in of himself. Yeah, so I, I find that whole dynamic to be kind of interesting. Yeah, he and he's um he is a completely different character in the Battle Action Force comics. Um, so j just to sort of show what, what Sal was talking about here, um, the Destro that we got in the 1983 range, um, he's got a white collar instead of a red collar, and where, like, the medallion would normally sit, he's basically got a red chest with the white skull and crossbones emblem, which is obviously the emblem of the Baron Ironblood's Red Shadow Army. Um very cool variation. Uh, I think this was one of the, the last ones I needed to to acquire for my collection. So, and he's changed from the arms dealer to the driver of the, their version of the his tank. Uh, yes, the hyena they call it. Hyena. The hyena. Was that bugging you, Bobby? What? It's the hyena. I mean, I think it's I think it's funny. I love it. I you know, and <laughs> so my you know. I, I think I, I, I've said it to my wife. She laughs at me. But, uh, like, I, I follow this one page on Instagram. It's called, like, Nature is Savage. And it always shows, like, just animals in the wild. And it shows, like, a lot of, like, hyenas, like, attacking other animals. I'm like, man, hyenas suck. They're just a nasty, nasty animal. So it's like, yeah. I hear, like, and then, like, in The Lion King, we watch it with the kids and stuff like that. The hyenas are just, like, the nasty villains. I'm just yeah. like you hear hyena and it's like there's nothing appealing about hyena. So it's <laughs> funny that that, okay. that vehicle is called that, and I hear it. I'm like, ugh. Hyena. So, sounds like a perfect name for a group of uh, almost Reaver Ravengers for Action Force, huh? Not a bad idea. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Yeah, yeah. Um, we've got a super chat here from Scuba Pete. Thanks very much, mate. He says. Um, <clears throat> Z Force headquarters discuss. Um, do you have a Z Force headquarters, Bobby? I don't. I almost bought one at, at Joe Fest, uh, but it was uh, missing. This Joe Fest you've just just yeah. recently. Yep, yep. There was one seller that had one, and he didn't have. I want the rarer variant with the hard edged camo pattern. Mm -hmm. but he, he had the more common uh, camo version. But it was missing uh, a few parts, and I was looking up those parts, and you know, I found a few of them. They were a little pricey, but I think his his price he was a little high on, and I was trying to get him down. I even waited till like the very end of the show when we were all packing up, and he wasn't budging. And I'm like, all right, have fun taking that home. Uh, so I, I didn't get it, but I, I'd really like one. I've seen a couple with the box on eBay UK. I you know, there's something about the 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 Z Force packaging that's really really nice so I wouldn't mind having one to display with the box but I just love that 
that headquarters. And, you know, it's something that I always keep an eye out for. So one day I'll get one. Yeah, yeah. Can I, can I, uh, what did he want for it? I think he wanted five or 600. Yeah, five or 600. And I was like, incomplete. Well, Incomplete, yeah, incomplete, and like the stuff that that it was missing. It's like it's pricey stuff. It was probably another two or three hundred dollars in missing parts. So I was just kind of like, listen, man, you know, not complete. Like it's it's probably only two or three hundred bucks, and he didn't want to come down that that low. You know, he's like, oh well, I paid way more for it. It's okay, so, you know, you could sit on it. That's fine. Yeah. Um, well, I, I bought a boxed complete one last year. <clears throat> when I say complete, it didn't have the two figures. I had to source them separately. Okay. But box complete, 500 US. See? See? That's, that's perfect. That's, that's, yeah. what the, that's what it should be, you know? And I have no yeah. problem paying the right price for it. I just want to make sure, like, you know, it has what, it, what I need. And it's, you know, this stuff is attainable. So I get excited when I see this stuff in the States, but, you know, I felt like that was a bit too much. Yeah. So the the the, the, the second version of the hyena um, was it the second ver yeah the second version of the hyena didn't come with Destro it, it just came with the traditional his tank driver and I don't know why they they changed that no I don't think they really did that with many of the other releases changed the driver figure but um, in eighty three I think eighty three and eighty four we got Red Jackal with the hyena and then. 85 either 84 or 85 it just came with the normal uh his tank driver um who was not recolored or anything he was just a actually the gi joe figure so would you um just before we started the stream you you shared with us a few of your uh quite rare superpower foreign variants your time yeah. to shine bobby <laughs> okay um so for those of you not familiar with with the superpowers line and and what variants it has superpowers was the kenner dc action figure line uh you know these great classic figures and i've gotten really deep into collecting this line recently and i'm only missing one more figure but it's such a great line it's very iconic and nostalgic and bright colors and great sculpting and they had a few international variants done by Estrella and I believe one other company, but it was more, you know, South American variants. The interesting thing about their variants is they made figures by just repainting other figures. So we have Green Lantern here, you know, with his power ring and his, his mask and his lantern. Yeah. But then in Estrella, they had Riddler. Now this is an authentic Estrella Riddler. So you can see that he has the, the power ring hand and it's the same exact sculpt as Green Lantern, just painted as Riddler. So this one was a really nice version with all his question marks intact. And uh, the funny thing was the, the when I was talking about like, uh, you know, things looking like, like knockoffs, the paint's never great. Like, I don't know if you could see the, the, the belt buckle is kind of crudely painted, but like the question yeah. marks are done really well. So... There's, you know, funny things like that on them. But also the big thing about this figure is that I don't know if you could tell, but the lower legs are a lighter green than the rest of his body. Yeah, and I can see that. They they did the lower legs almost in like it almost looks like a milky translucent lighter green color as opposed to the, the ABS parts of, uh, you know, the, the rest of the body. And every version is like this. And the funny thing is, is when Mattel did their, their, their six inch line and they did a version of the superpowers Riddler, they made the figures lower legs, a lighter colored green to mimic this, this version of the, of the figure. Yeah. So uh, it's very cool that they did that, but this is, this is a great figure. I, I think it's cool that they easily made a Riddler out of a green lantern. I mean, yes, he's got the power ring, but it's very minor, but other than that, it's, it's perfect. Um, you know, it's way better than the, that Toy Biz version, uh, <laughs> with a sized head. But um, the other, the bad part about it is it's kind of like a Holy Grail piece. It's, you know, it's very, very pricey. It's hard to find them in very good condition with the question marks. Um, but, you know, 
Uh, I've been, I've been overpaying on this line just because I love it. Um, The other, um, sorry, Joe. Yeah. Yeah. Keith Holmesley here is saying his holy grail is the repainted Kenner Mm -hmm. Superpowers Batman for the 1989 Batman in black. Well, well, Keith, it just so happens we are going to go into that figure. So his mind is just doing this. (laughs) (laughs) So this is the Estrella. I guess you would call it the 89 Batman uh, figure. Now this figure. So the Riddler was, was done in uh, super amigos was their superpowers, but it was still the same packaging that, that blue and yellow packaging. This figure, which is basically the superpowers, Batman, just all black. Yeah. He was put onto basically the 89 Toy Biz Batman card. So for cuz obviously it's the, you know, the the Black Batman for the movie. So it's kind of part of like I look at it as like a quasi in between because you know, it's not really part of superpowers, but the 89 Batman movie is probably the most impactful thing ever in my my entire childhood. So I had to have this figure and also the cool thing is, is if you look at that 89 Toy Biz Batman figure, on the back, the 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 photography they use for the figure is a superpowers Batman. And they just kind of cut a hole in the belt and put the grappling hook. So it's funny that they showed a superpowers Batman figure, but then the, the Toy Biz version you got was just a totally new sculpt. So then I came to learn that this was actually a, a Batman figure that was made and a real version. So this is... Uh, that version. And, you know, these are definitely very pricey. Um, it's all, also, it's, you know, it's hard to get them in, in amazing condition, but you can see like the bat symbols, a little, little scratchy. The funny thing is, is his eyes are painted flesh tone. I don't know if you could tell, but they're painted flesh tone. They're not painted white. So it was interesting that they did that. And I know why they did it because when you put the spray mask on, you clamp it over the head and you just spray. So they just looked at it like, uh, well, we're not going to put a new spray mask on to paint, paint white eyes. They just do one mask and it covers both both parts. Yeah. But very cool figure. Um, there's also another international figure, uh, Captain – shoot, is it Captain Lightning, something like that? I don't really consider that really part of the line or a figure I'd want. It was mo- mostly just the Batman and the Riddler that are, are, are ones that, that I felt I had to have. But those are the, the superpowers international variants for you. Nice. Thank, thank you. I've, I've, um, I've, I've been very interested in, I know you've recently started getting into collecting the line. That's like yeah. one of the, the toy lines on my list of yeah, maybe when I finish mask, I'm going to start getting superpowers. I don't know if I'm going to go down the route of getting all the, I, I, for me, I only like to get the international variants when they were made by Palatoy, just because Palatoy is my, it's my company. It's what I grew up with. So. Some call this guy an international variant because he was only available in Canada and the UK. But, uh, you know, I think he's part of the line. So, that is a beautiful when, example. When did you start collecting superpowers? It, it, listen, it was, it was super quick. It's only been the last, I'd say, four months. Um, yeah. But like, when, I get, when I get my mind on something, I go all in and I go hard. Like, I go really hard. So... Yeah, I saw I, you bidding on the auction today. <laughs> yeah, so so I've always wanted a superpowers collection just because I had it when I was a kid or some of the figures when I was a kid, and it's just a great line and it holds up. It just looks great, and it's there, there's also it's not a very deep line. Like it's not like trying to get into Star Wars or Turtles where it's hundreds of figures. It's only three waves. Yes, the third wave is very hard to get, so it's it's a pricey line, but it's not a, a lot of them, and. I remember Ryan, who was on the Infinity Equation with me on Fridays, he was at a toy show in, in Seattle or Washington, where he's where he's from, and he was like, hey, does anybody need anything? And I said, see if they have any superpower stuff. It turned out a seller had, had some, and I ended up getting like four figures, four or five figures. And then it was like, floodgates were open, man. I got those four figures, and I said, I got some, now I have to just go. And I remember uh, I was in on vacation with my wife in Cancun about a month ago or a month and a half ago. And I was sitting on the beach just on, on eBay, like every day, just buying superpowers. And I found a seller that had a lot of the rare ones like cyborg and plastic man. And I spent way too much money, uh, then <laughs> buying superpowers on the beach. But, um, 
it's been fun and I like the hunt of it and I just love these figures and I can't wait to display them. Yeah, don't drink and bid. <laughs> oh, I do it all the time. I I can look around, I can constantly see just like, you know, bad eBay impulse buys. <laughs> Uh, Jason Keane, thank you for the super chat. He says, um, reverse topic question, but do you think the Z Force infantrymen influenced the look of G.I. Joe's hit and run? Um, any other G.I. Joe similarly influenced? I've actually got hit and run. You won't be able to see it on the camera. Maybe if I just for a moment go full screen. Um, hit and run is actually abseiling down the side of the Ghostbusters firehouse. Um me personally, I, I don't. I think there was too many years in between. I would say Hit and Run was far more influenced by the movies of the time. Um, you know, it was, it was starting. There, there, there was a number of movies in the late eighties where you're starting to see modern military with uh, all the, the the camouflage paint on the faces and, and stuff like that. So, um, all right, Sal, Colonel Stingray Johnson. <laughs> What's this about? What is this sorcery? Oh, this is uh, Captain Power. I, I was trying to get away with this while you were full screen, but I took too long. Um, so just uh, something I'm recently getting into, uh, this Lieutenant Tank Ellis is the American release, which I don't know if you can make out the uh, kind of silver there on uh, the title, mm -hmm. where the Colonel Stingray Johnson, which is... From my limited understanding, because it's a new line I'm getting into, is extremely rare. It's actually a foreign release, and they just went with a matte gray and blue. So he's got the little French there, and on the back we have everything in English, then again in French. So, and uh, he's carded, but uh, he won't be tomorrow. So tune into that live stream if you want to see me commit blasphemy. <laughs> Which they also had some back. exclusives in, in yeah. Europe for Captain Power. Yeah, so um, that's going to be the toy repairs. Go, I'm sorry, Ed, go ahead. I didn't mean to interrupt. Um, no, I was interrupting you. Um, they also <laughs> had some uh, exclusives at the end of the line in Europe for Captain Power. Not everything got released in the U.S. So. Yep, that's uh, something I'm learning. I think there was what two two waves two, or waves in quotes. Yeah, two waves, indeed. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. I think uh, Colonel Stingray Johnson was part of that second wave, but they did a really piss poor job of showing you who else was available on the back. Yeah. So <laughs> one of my biggest pet peeves when it comes to any toy line is like, I like to see who else is available because I don't know if I have them all. So. Yeah, no, I suppose um, that's, I, I was trying to list down kind of all the different foreign toy lines that I could think of that had interesting variants. Um, but again, you know, planning for Iconicon, lots of different panels. I was kind of running through. I, I was going to talk a bit about some of the South American Rambo figures, but now, Ed, Ed, you've just, when you mentioned European exclusive there, the first thing that popped into my head were the Laser Light Masters of the Universe figures, which I believe, it's a Laser Light He-Man, Laser Light Skeletor. Yeah. Uh, technically not not variants. They're, they're, yeah, they're, they're not variants. They're exclusive. Like Titus and... Titus and Megator, Titus Megator. Two giants. Megator, yeah. they, they were released in Mexico, but also in Italy or yep. Germany. I, I guess yeah. Germany at the laser lights. And uh, um, yeah, but they're uh, just Euro. That was, part of the, was that the um, power? You did have Grace like though? multiple variants of whether it was the UK factory making Master of the Universe or France one. There's like little tiny paint details, but not as as big of an impact as like the palette toy stuff um but uh, i saw the video you did on rambo and that was great tony um uh, how, yeah, how deep don't, that don't my oh, knowledge man. because i made that video so long ago i don't remember most of it um but i, yeah. I had a, a, a collector from argentina reached out to me because i've done another video about coleco's rambo and he just started sending me all these photographs. And I was so, I knew about some of the South American variations of, of Rambo. The, the amount of photos he was sending me, I was like, man, I, I don't think I've ever, even it even outstrips what Palatoy did with Action Force, the amount of variations they had. Um, like the entire first wave of figures was um, redone in the Rambo Desert Brigade. So they're all in desert camouflage, which I think they did around the time that they, 
released Rambo 3 and that kind of thing. Yeah, and they had, like, the whole wrestling ring and, like, other play sets, different helicopters. They even had, like, a live-action show with wrestling. <laughs> and then it coincided with uh, Terminator as well, uh, that, that the yes, company yeah. was doing the same thing. And they, they made, like, a double pack, Terminator versus Rambo. Yeah. Yeah, Rambo Terminator you Terminator. watch that video, and all of a sudden, like, everything opens up, and you're like, what? Why did I miss all this? Why did I not know about this? This is amazing. So, uh, yeah, definitely check out that video if you want to learn about that stuff. Um, but yeah, I actually had like, um, uh, same thing, like, like a collector, uh, from Greece reaching out to me, um, about black star stuff. And, uh, yeah. perhaps, you know, the connection between black star and, uh, masters of the universe in Greece or not? No. Nope. No, they actually rebranded Black Star as part of the Master of the Universe toy line. Really? Yeah, so they made I think it's John Black Star, is that the main yep. character's name? Uh they gave him like uh a different paint job to make him look like E Man. And they just went with it. Um, I'm working on a video about that, but uh, I'm still learning like every day. He keeps on sending me pictures and we're trying to figure out how we're going to tell this story. But it, it's definitely uh, a really cool one. Uh, how they seem to just, you know, dump stuff in Europe at the end uh, of, uh, of a toy line success in the U.S. And then just magical stuff happens. Um, yeah, yeah. which is like a completely different thing of what happened with Action Force and G.I. Joe, uh, where it was split up at first and then it came together. Yeah. yeah. Sam, you've, um, you've got a few customs there. They look like some red lasers. How, have you made those? Yeah, that's not the first time I forgot I was muted. Um, <laughs> no, uh, those red lasers are actually Black Major. Um, oh, interesting, yep. Yep. Uh, there was like a set of six or seven. I just grabbed the ones that were looked more red laser. Cause he did like a red laser version of Firefly and Snake Eyes and all that. Um, to Bobby's point earlier, they're, the construction's not the greatest. The plastic feels very thin, uh, very fun school-esque. But, you know, for someone like me who uh, has a difficult time getting or obtaining action force because, uh, you know, import and all that kind of crap... Uh, they're they're a great alternative, though um, they may or may not end up in a box on their way to you, Tony. So there's that. <laughs> um, as for and I grabbed him uh, this anti attorney he man just to kind of piggyback off of what Ed was saying. Uh, anti attorney he man, if I'm not mistaken, was only in Germany, and Bobby has the second one I ever made. So there's only two of these in existence that I've done. I'm working on a third, which may or may not be a giveaway at some point. Just saying. Um, but he appeared in uh, like one of the audio books, like with the cassette tape and all that in Germany, or maybe was all of Europe. But I know Germany for a fact. And he didn't really have any kind of stateside presence outside of like the hardcore collectors until Motu Classics when they did a version of him for that. So, yeah, this is just the one that I made with a Motu Origins. But just talking about how, you know, Europe at the end of it, because it was 1986 when he showed up. So. You know, Motu is still around here, but the show, I think, was off the air at that point or something. Yeah. So it's just kind of how Europe gets to make really cool stuff. And then America is like, yeah, that's neat. I guess we'll just uh, focus on Silverhawks now. Didn't it, like, transition way quicker into the She-Ra uh, cartoons? Right. And we eventually got uh, She-Ra, the Princess of Power, which is uh, Hordak and all of them, which, if I'm not mistaken, Hordak was originally supposed to be in Motu. And that's why he was on a Motu card when he had the shelves in the U.S. So, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, I'm learning every day, Sal. I've, I didn't know anything about anti-attorney or He-Man. Oh, yeah. They've no. got anti-attorney of Man-at-Arms and Tila, and there's like a whole universe. He's in... Uh, and he doesn't have Castle Grayskull. He has like Castle Hellscream or something like that. Something really freaking metal. And the whole castle looks different. It's like a like a demon screaming or something. I don't know. It's it's really out there. But yeah, these uh, foreign variants or foreign because he's technically a whole new character for Europe, but we never got him. Yeah. So. 
What is yeah, that? Intro, and, go on, Bobby. What does that figure go for? The one with the cassette. Oh God, I'm. I don't even want to know. I've seen it uh, through Google Image whether someone made Anti Eternia He Man into a figure or not as an official release. I don't know, but he existed in the storybook. The little because uh, it's like a book and a cassette. Like you can find them yeah. on Google, but whether those are uh, customs or not, I, I don't know. Gotcha. I'm, I'm kind of afraid to go down that rabbit hole because. Like you, when I find something I like, I'm like, oh, God, well, I guess I'll just eat ramen for a month. <laughs> yeah, well, as I was getting close to completing um, my Z Force collection, like that was the um, that was that was the last Action Force video I did on the teams. Obviously, then after that, I went back and actually went back in time to do 90, the 1982 video. But I think one of the last things I needed to acquire was um, Gaucho, who is the the rare recolor of, of Gun Ho. Um, I think a, a much improved recolor of, of Gun Ho. Um, um, a jammer I paid quite a bit of money for, the recolored Stalker. Um, but I couldn't even find this guy for sale. And a supporter of the channel sent me sent this to me really, really beat up. So it went from the UK to Australia, and then I sent it to someone on the east coast of the States, a longtime supporter of the channel, Joseph, who did an amazing job restoring this, and it's come back looking like a brand new action figure. So that's how I got Gaucho. Still don't see them turn up. Have you got one of those, Bobby? No, Gaucho and Hunter are the only two I'm missing. Everyone else I have. Oh, I gave Michael French a Hunter. <laughs> Just... <laughs> no, it wasn't. It wasn't, it wasn't in fantastic condition. I kind of upgraded the one I had, so um, gotcha. I didn't didn't need to. So I, I, I passed I passed it on to Michael. So yeah. Um, are, are you familiar with the South? A lot of the South American Rambo stuff, Bobby. I'm not. This is the first time I'm hearing about it. So now I'm intrigued. This is the first time I'm, I'm hearing about International Captain Power, and I'm like, well, I'm going to be on eBay all day today. <laughs> well um I, I i was big into rambo when i was a kid you know, like the movies the mm. coleco toy line great toy line and, yeah and it's it, it it didn't in this thing i think in the states you only had it for two years and this and the second wave is a lot harder to find than the first wave you know it wasn't Obviously, didn't last that long. That long or was very popular because they didn't produce that much of, of the second wave of figures. But in South America, it kept going for years. And when I was researching my video um, about all the foreign variations, because there was so much to talk about, I was hunting around on on YouTube for toy commercials. I think that's how it started. I don't remember exactly. They had a TV show in Argentina. Rambo and the Force of Freedom themed wrestling like every Friday night where Colonel Troutman would wrestle General Warhawk and Black Dragon would come in. It was it was amazing. But then they, they would also have they had police academy characters in there sometimes. <laughs> okay. it's, it's absolutely bo you can spend a whole day on YouTube watching Rambo wrestle like Hightower from Police Academy and it's crazy. <laughs> I know what I'm doing later tonight, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, James, thank you for the super chat. He says, um, "I'll find my I'll find my hunter, Bobby, and send him to you." Wow! Uh, listen, I'll I will gladly pay for it, uh, but I appreciate that, James. That's amazing. Yeah. Do you know James? Is he I don't. Is name familiar? I don't. Okay. Although I'm so bad with names, I meet people all the time at, at conventions, and then I'll see them the next year, and they'll be talking to me, and I was like. I think, I, I think we've met before. So I'm apologetically terrible with names. So uh, there's probably tons of people. I'm sure me and James have probably had tons of conversations that I just don't remember. Just because I, <laughs> this, my memory with that kind of stuff is just awful. Uh, I I know what you're saying. Like I'm, I, I really hope I remember your name. It's only, you know, it's only the first time you've been on the show. Um, what do you do? What do I do? Yeah, you've got um, a job or... <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, I'm a I'm a barista at Dunkin' Donuts. Uh, <laughs> since you guys are getting along so well, there's another guy, uh, Michael French. I think you guys would get along great with him. Um, I'll, I'll put you, I'll put you on. Yeah, I'll put you in contact. I'll send you the keys. 
No, thanks. <laughs> yeah. No, is he French? That's a bad <laughs> joke. Why did I? <laughs> I think I even thought about that before I said it, and then it came out of my mouth. I was like, you idiot. <laughs> it's early. <laughs> yeah. So um, I did find a photo. Uh, this is the audio play that he appears in. And the image I had found earlier of this one was actually released in 2016. So yeah, there was wow, never okay. an official release of anti attorney he man in figure form until like recently. Well, uh, so it was just, a, it was just a character in some of the storybooks. In, right. Yeah. In that Europe, was uh, yeah. released in German. So, so. And they had loads of tapes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. So it's, it, it's a shame I called the, the title of, of this panel changes to iconic toy lines outside of the US because I could go on for quite a while talking about the changes to Action Man in Europe. Like they actually came out with a Zorro outfit, which um, is a prized piece of my collection. It's very, very hard to get. Only came out in France. Uh, beautiful outfit for Action Man. Should have brought it down on the table. Still a 1980s toy as well, so it qualifies. <laughs> um, I don't know if we would count that because we had the little vinyls for our little storybooks instead of tapes, or at least initially. So I don't know if that would count as a foreign variant or not. But there you go. That's something you know now. Yeah, nice. We've got a um, super chat here from James. He says, no sweat, Bobby. You bought my Black Major carded steel brigades. Thank. Now I know. See, I, I told you, me and James have probably talked before. I just needed that little little reminder. And, yes, yeah. um, I do have I, – I, I love and hate the – the black major red laser stuff, but man, those steel brigade ones are, are, are a fix for me, man. So, uh, yeah, there are some cool carded ones that are on the old retro card that are super, super cool. And because steel brigade never came on a, on a retro burst card, it was very cool that they, that they made those. So, uh, thank you, James. Thank you so much. That was actually a question I, I was going to bring up, uh, talking about variants and foreign releases were mail aways. If there was any significant difference between what was offered as a mail away for GI Joe and Kenner star Wars versus what you might've gotten in the UK or France or whatever. Yeah. Steel steel brigade was very different. Uh, well, not different in the figure, but different in, so there was the steel brigade in the U S and then the steel brigade in Canada uh, real, real quick, I'm sorry, Ed. I wouldn't show those because Bobby's probably going to try and buy them for me. <laughs> no, I, I've I've stepped I've stepped back. I, I I have you know all mine, and although I did just you know get some of these in the mail the other day, um, but uh, no, uh, Ed. If Ed, we'll talk after. Um, <laughs> <Don't you. laughs> um, so in in Canada, they had pretty much the same offering for Steel Brigade. And on, the only thing that was different was the, the, the file card uh, was a little different up top and it was, it was in, it was in French, but, oh, yeah. but then in the UK steel brigade wasn't called steel brigade. It was called a um, uh, special core and it was a whole different offering. The figure was exactly the same, but the figure came with a much different file card and it came with, a huge oversized poster and it came with a record, like a little 45 record. And then it also came with an ID card. So it was like this, this big, big offering. It had like a little note. I think it was from Hawk uh, in, in, the, in the line. And it took me a while to track one down. And I, uh, a gentleman by the name of uh, Tim Enos, he, he follows, uh, you know, action force. And he's a big supporter of the line. I bought his childhood one. So I have his whole set with 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 the uh, I think it's missing the record maybe the one that adds card I the I have his original poster it's in the conference room and it, he wrote his name uh, on it which is cool and the file card I have and it was just cool that it's it's special core like that that they just changed it they didn't change the figure they just changed the whole offering I have one of the original order forms for, for special core which is very very cool. Um, so I'd like to kind of see how I could sneak in a special core to the modern Action Force line. So now that okay. the brigade's in Action Force, it'd be cool to do a, a special core sort of thing. You, you could mock up a uh, water slide decal 
that gets included with some of them and they can opt to put that on the shoulder or something. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see how hard it is to get 45 records made. So mm. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Um, but yeah, but they're, they're very, very hard to come by. Um, I believe, uh, I believe Tim is in the UK and, and, you know, so when I got it, I got it. Cause I was like scouring, uh, eBay UK, or maybe someone told me about it, but, I snatched it right up, but they're, they're very, very hard to come by the special core stuff. Uh, any piece in particular, like the actual record or the poster or uh, the, uh, yeah, yeah. Kind of all of it. Like you'll see them if, if they do come up, it's usually the figure in the file card. The file card was really big though. It's, it's much bigger than, than this version. It's, it's way bigger. Um, yep. You know, and the poster's a huge 24 by 36 poster. It's, it's enormous. Um, but, um, you know, the, the ID card. So it was like the fe- like if you get one, you got to, you know, if you find it from someone like like Tim, his was his childhood one. So it was he ha- kind of had it all intact, but it's very, very hard to get that stuff. Um, let me I, the, the poster's so cool. I'll, I'll, let me grab it real quick. No worries. Uh, Jody, thank you for the super chat. He says um, somehow France got a lot of stuff that were not released anywhere else in Europe and U.S., uh, E.G. Popey Bandai stuff. Interesting. So here's the poster, and it was it was very awesome. And you could see see how the the that label that that little icon says Special Core, and yeah. Tim wrote his name as a, as a, as a kid. Um, so this it was crazy that this giant giant poster came with you know that that figure. So very very cool offering uh, in the UK. Much much better than our state's Steel Brigade. So, you know, kind of wish I lived in the UK because I can get a bunch of those. What what, what year was that? Uh, the, those are, let me see if there's a date. On it. But I believe it was probably in the 88, 89 range because the, the version of this, so it shows a version B figure, but I believe that the figure that came with it was a version D, and version D started in eighty nine, I believe. So yeah. I think it was you know eighty nine ninety was probably that that uh, that timeline. Yeah, I tell you, I, I kick myself routinely every day uh, when I first started getting back into collecting vintage Joe. I kind of knew like certain things, but not a whole lot. Like I recognized the characters I had as a kid, or I was like, oh, that's Cobra, that's Destro, whatever. Uh, a local shop to me at the time got this massive collection of Joe in and the owner didn't know anything about Joe. So he was selling all the loose figures for five bucks a pop. And I passed on a uh, steel, steel brigade and a star duster. Cause I didn't recognize oh. him. Oh. And just, I watched some guy like he, he came in after me and I had a big old box of all this stuff that I was getting. And he's, he even like kind of looked at me. He's like, you sure you don't want these two? Cause I kind of had first dig at everything. I was like, yeah, fuck it. I don't want him. Take it. I'm sorry. Yeah, screw it. Take him. And he was like, okay, and paid ten bucks for the pair. Wow. Yeah. So. Um, if Brendan Haley's saying here, UK special core prices just went up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bobby, I've, I've, I've learned a lot from you during our friendship, but I, I have to hold my hands in in the air here and and, and admit to. For the first time, you have you've just educated me on a British toy. It's not supposed to work that way. <laughs> because I, I would have I went I moved from England to Australia in September of '88. Um, so I'm saying that may have been the Christmas release in in '88 or maybe '89 because I would have known about it if I had been in the UK um, when that came out. Um, yes. Didn't know the name. I just thought it was called Steel Brigade in England as well. So, yeah. I wonder how many of them posters are still around. I know. I know. Someone in the chat just said uh, the poster is going for, I don't know what, 50 euro 50 euros. Is. 50 euros. So it'd be like $75, I think. Yeah, something like yeah. that. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's, listen, man. They're not, I don't, I don't see them maybe one a year, maybe. Um, but, I haven't seen one in a very long time. Yep. So, Sal, do you have um, a particular 
favorite variant, foreign variant, or a type of variant, or you know, what is it that interests you most? Uh, the ones that interest me most uh, is Action Force, uh, unapologetically, because I, I like GI Joe so much. You know, I kind of established he's not a variant; he's his own character. But uh, Red Jackal is up there for me, um, just because you know. Anyone who knows me knows I've been using Destro as my online icon for a couple of years now. But yeah. uh, that one in particular really interests me. And it's, it's, there's something about it. It's, it's this unique thing beyond, you know, oh, that's a different version of the same toy. It's uh, as you as you and Bobby know, I'm really big on like childhood memories and imagination and the way we played and things like that. And it's it's a uh, I guess some form of empathy I guess is the best way to describe it is to try and put myself into like say your shoes like when you think back to your childhood you think action force or action man where I think GI Joe even though they were kind of the same thing it's just this kind of interesting phenomenon to me like Ed I wanted to bring up uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles for you were Hero Turtles and like Michelangelo saw the biggest change in weapons probably. I didn't notice like they were always Ninja Turtles to me, but then again, I I started talking English at a very early age. Um, gotcha. So yeah, it, it was always Ninja Turtles to me, even though it said hero. Um, Turtles actually didn't have any like real big variations until the '90s in Europe, where they changed like some stuff or did extra paints uh, or had really big color differences. Um, gotcha. But it, it's like this whole thing where it's like, we can, we can love the same IP. Like we can love turtles or GI Joe or He-Man or whatever. But in our mind's eye, when I say like, you know, Destro or red laser or whatever, we conjure up two very different things. Kind of like, uh, I guess for a good example, that would be like regional dialect differences in the U S like Bobby in Rhode Island, they call a water fountain a bubbler, yeah. right? Yeah. So when I say water fountain, I think of something you drink from. Everyone else thinks of the things you see in a park. So it's, I don't know, things like that are just super fascinating to me. And that's kind of at its core what interests me the most about foreign variants is how we can be on different parts of the world, <clears throat> know the same character, but think of two very different things. Yeah. The bonnet and the boot. Right. That's another good example that we kind of kicked off with. Like that's that to me, it's just a super interesting phenomenon. Yeah, I mean, it, for me, growing up with this toy line, the GI Joe stuff was the foreign variant and the, and the desirable right. stuff because it wasn't accessible to us. Um, I think that's what when when I started getting big into collecting Action Man um, in my late teens. Um, I got fascinated about the stuff that I didn't grow up with. So first of all, I started to go back in time. I wanted to go back to the seventies. Then I started to go back to the 1960s um, because it was, you know, I, I started to collect catalogs and would see the other products in, in the line. Was, you know, you know, this was not stuff that was around when I was a kid. And that's what I found more desirable. And then it even extended further where I've now got a decent sized collection of 1960s GI Joe military figures because <laughs> it was something I didn't grow up with and is and is desirable. So um, you, you, th you, you think collecting styles is, is expensive? Go and start collecting 1960s GI Joe stuff. <laughs> I've, I, I've kind of got the figures I want and I, I tapped out on that some time ago. <laughs> uh, no toy line is cheap anymore. Every now and then I'll look for like a, a toy line that I can collect cheaply. The only one that's still relatively cheap Kenner, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Still get the whole line for like, you know, around three, four hundred bucks. But every toy line I noticed, like the the Tonka Willow stuff has gone up in price. Captain Power stuff has gone up in price. Um, I'm glad I got my whole Dick Tracy collection. Uh, but, you know, that blank figure. Woo. But it's crazy how every toy line is just skyrocketed in price. Yeah. And, um, I mean, there's heaps of people out there collecting the Kenner Police Academy line, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah. And the mail <laughs> in Paris is, is expensive. 
What? There's expensive parts of that toilet? I was trying to make a joke. Yeah, that, so Captain Harris was the mail away. Like every toy line back then had a mail away. And he was oh. a mail away I think, very late in the line, like right when it was it was kind of dying out. So he's yeah. hard to get. He's got like a hat and I think he's got like a swagger stick. But um, yeah, he's he's really, really, really expensive. Um, I haven't checked in a while. He's probably around a $300 figure, uh, which for Police Academy is expensive. You know, it's only yes. Police Academy. They ever released that play set? That was like a yeah, the, version of the firehouse. Yeah, or, yeah, it, yeah. It was out. Oh, never seen pretty that. sure it was out. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. Someone commented on my my Ghostbusters video that I I'm, I premiered somewhere during Iconicon. I don't know what day, what time zone it was, what time of day. <laughs> but someone commented on that video today, and that was the first I'd ever heard of it. That yeah, they did a, a kind of repurposed it as a police station toy for the police academy line um and it had a lot of extra features and yeah, it seemed like twice as big that. but uh yeah yeah i saw it at, at like a toy fair magazine but yeah yeah nice so um uh, keith Holmesley says do any of you remember the tonka toy line figures and vehicles steal monsters i love that line it was like mad max i don't i don't either fortunately no. not Gonna have to look that up. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was I wasn't much of a wasn't much of a car guy. Like I, I liked vehicles when they were tanks and anti aircraft weapons, but <laughs> that was pro probably my thing with Transformers. Like I didn't like robot mode, and then you just turned it into a, a car or a truck. No interest whatsoever. Uh, Michael Schaefer, have you heard me say that before? <laughs> <laughs> I would love if I could ride a horse to work. And that is true. That is true. I would like to go back to a world where the human race got about on horses in the horse and car. We still had technology and electronics and everything. We just didn't drive cars. I would I would love to to have a, a ranch where I can get horses and ride horses. I, I'm with you, man. I'm with you. I was I I'd never ridden a horse until I got married and me and my wife went on our honeymoon and we, we went horseback riding there. I was terrified of horses. I was like, that's a big ass animal. And I don't think that animal wants me on its back, but I ro I rode the horse and there's something just awesome about it. You get on the back of a horse. It's very, very cool. So I've grown to like, love the idea of like having a horse and horseback riding. So I'm with you, man. Yeah. <laughs> so are we getting a horse in, um, Wave three, action force. <laughs> action force. Uh, I don't know. Wave three is the, the female. So maybe maybe like wave seven or eight. We'll see. I, although I got to do vehicles first. I keep getting hounded about vehicles. So no, the horse is a vehicle. A horse is a vehicle. This is true. I, th I think Condor would look uh, pretty slick on the back of a horse, if I do say so myself. I mean, I may have a, a faction in mind that are a Texas based group of Ooh. cowboys. So, mm -hmm. say space cowboys. <laughs> <laughs> well, what was your rule, Bobby? Don't go into space. You go to space. You go to space. You kill a line. <laughs> right? When it, right? Did uh, when? When did? When did? Yeah. Was was space towards the end? I know they only did a couple space guys, but you know, you don't go to space. Star Brigade. You know, it's just bad news, man. Bad news. Well, uh, they needed something to fight the Robo Skull, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Ed, have you got? A, we'll be wrapping it up in a couple of minutes here, and I'm straight on. To, well, actually, my um, my review of the Mask Boulder Hill playset is premiering in about twenty minutes' time. So, I'll be in the live chat, and then I'm straight on to another stream with Michael French of Retro Blasting and Toy Poloy, a stream that people have been asking for for years. They wanted to to see the three of us uh, kind of on, on camera together. So I'm looking forward to that. But but just before we wrap up, um, Ed, is there a particular um, variant that you like most or type of variant? Um, be it action figures, vehicles, any line, um, any line at all? Oh, I wish I knew about this question before, but uh, <laughs> it's kind of hard to think of one. Um Variant wise, uh, I guess I, I like the Master of the Universe stuff, but it's like the the Leo toy and like the Kamo Khan stuff like that. Uh, oh yeah, that yeah. Really popped into my radar. Um, 
Yeah, so, so that, that was yeah. that, that was like a, a Cobra Khan figure that had like a camouflage on him. Yeah. 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 And, and what that's, country that's, was that from? That's like Brazil or something? Mexico? I think so, but they they had loads of different ones. Uh, weren't they doing some for like PowerCon this year, where you had the mm-hmm. horror troopers in all the different colors? And then I guess Leo Toys was the yep um, the faker. Indian. The sorry, it was a uh, Leo Faker was the PowerCon one. Yeah, and yep. those came from India or Leo mm-hmm. Toys. Oh, I'm not sure. I'd have to look that up. It's basically the Faker looks the same, except he has Skeletor armor and uh, yeah. Skeletor Havoc staff, and he has like guy liner on, basically. Yeah, but he, they armor. all have like different <laughs> colors as well over there. Like, uh, yeah, yeah. All right, uh, well, yeah, well, those are the ones I, I'd be after, like um, f- variation wise. Yeah, yeah. One final question for Bobby before we go. And I may judge you on your answer here, Bobby. Oh, boy. So what is your favorite Action Force figure as a, that is a, a foreign variant from G.I. Joe? There's not that many to choose from. Uh, Spirit is a real good one. Um, I'm, I'm a real sucker for Tiger Force and Hit and Run was one of my all time, like favorite GI Joes. So that, that Tiger Force Hit and Run is, is great. But I think, listen, it's probably a tie between Red Jackal and Red Laser. I think they're, they're just, they took an existing great figure and made another great version. It wasn't like, one was better than the other. It was like, wait, that's amazing. Oh, wait, no, no, that's amazing too. So, you know, to get something so unique off of an existing figure like Battleshield Cobra Commander to get Red Laser, it's like, that's amazing. So I'd probably have to go with, you know, probably Red Laser would probably edge it out a little bit, um, you know, because I also, I you know, when I was at Hasbro, I was doing some, consulting for the collector's club and I was helping them with a bunch of figure designs and character choices. And I did the, I pushed them to do the red laser figure. So I did the build for it and the deco and everything like that. So to get a modern day red laser out was very important for me. So I'd have to go with, with red laser just by yeah. little. Nice. Um, is, is that a good answer for you or, or is that, or, or am I being judged? I was just hoping that you were going to go for one of the early action for and not go for like a Tiger Force thing. So, yeah, like I said, I mean, the, the Tiger Force stuff is there's something really cool about it. Like, I like that they took characters that weren't in Tiger Force and then put them in Tiger Force, but then didn't exactly follow the, the U.S. version of Tiger Force and Slaughter's Marauders. Like I said, they're great. I, lo- I love them. But the earlier stuff is, is way better. Yeah. Yeah, for for me, I think it's um it's Quarrel personally. Quarrel's um, a great figure. Her color her color balance is so yeah. like it, it's perfect. It, it really is perfect. All right, guys, we're uh, we're just about at time. Um, Sal, I'd like to give you first an opportunity to um basically to, to to plug like where people can find you, but also your next um what's up for your next iconic on panel. Ah, yes, yes. So you can find me at Two Cents Toys on uh, pretty much all the social platforms, though, if you're trying to get a hold of me. Uh, YouTube and Instagram is the best way to do that. So I do toy reviews on modern toys, and I do customizations a lot and kind of walk you through that and a modicum of toy repairs, some odds and ends here and there. Uh, the next video I have for Iconicon is at 945 Eastern today, where I customized a Lenard Predator to look even better than NECA Predator because they suck. Um, <laughs> but the the panel I'm looking forward to today, you'll see these two very handsome gentlemen that I'm here with. We're going to be talking about the military influence on toys, which I think is at 6 p.m. Eastern, 6 a.m. for Tony. And yeah. it's going to be... Right? Yeah, it's, it's going to be basically a bunch of guy love and uh, possibly some man touching, but mostly talking about Action Force and G.I. Joe. And we got some real... Some real good questions, I think, to kind of go over with that. And I'm very much looking forward to it. Nice. All right. Um, Ed, tell everyone where they can where they can find you. 
you can find me on YouTube is that's retro geek out and on all socials as well um i have a new video premiering today i think um uh, pretty much made for this convention <laughs> so yeah. I, I did like a, a new sub thing within what i call the toy history uh series stuff this time it's about failed toys uh some 80s lines that uh didn't really reach it passed to the second wave and uh i'll also be on another panel about uh prices we have to guess prices of 80s toys so that's gonna oh, be fun but honestly yeah. like anything on iconicon is is gonna be awesome so just keep watching guys <laughs> nice yeah and, and all the links to these channels are in the description below and um finally my man bobby valor um there's two links below for you because One's to some rinky dink podcast, but the other one is to obviously valiverse.com. Um, so thank you very much for taking time out of your, your schedule again. Um, I'm really looking forward to, to sitting down with you again tomorrow morning, Bobby. Yes. Not tonight, tomorrow morning. Don't, um, don't get confused. For <laughs> listen, anyone tuning in now, tune into that show tonight because I've got a big surprise for everyone. So if you're a fan of the current Action Force line, you're not going to want to miss it. So tune in live so you can see see it live. Just don't don't miss it. Are we getting a Kali sniper? Better. <laughs> Better? Sorry, Michael. <laughs> All right. Uh, I just saw Michael in the chat so that they're saying he's very sleep deprived. Yeah, I think we... I think he, he got off the last stream last night at like 11.30 and he's on at 8 a.m. Um, with me and Toy Poloi. So I need to get going. I need to go to the bathroom. I've got to premiere my mask video. So um, we're, we're back on at 10 for Arnie and Sly, baby. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. I'm, I'm back yep. on at 8 for the Toy Trinity and then again at 10 for Arnie and Sly. And then I'm going to get 15 minutes sleep and then I'll be on Two Cents Toys in the morning for the military <laughs> toys run. Power nap. Love it. Yeah. Love it. Nice. All right. Thank you all again to my guests, and I'll see you on the next panel. Cheers.